many of you have ever um, encountered someone or something bigger than you? <laughs> me too. Big me too. In fact, of course, I've never met anybody bigger than God. Knowing that God is bigger than anyone I might come into contact with, a trouble I might run into, has helped me through some pretty tough times. How did I know God was bigger? Well, it took time to discover, but me, I, I learned that way back when. You see, I was a runt. My daddy had eight boys, and I was the youngest. When you're the youngest, you get picked on a lot. People don't expect as much out of you. And the chores. Some of you know what I'm talking about. The worst chores get passed down from the older to the younger to the younger to the younger until there's nobody left to pass them down to anymore, right? And that's where they stick. Me? My job was taking care of the sheep. Boring! I don't know what you've heard, but that's a boring chore. Sheep are not very exciting creatures. <laughs> they pretty much just stand around all day and munch on grass. <laughs> But somebody's got to watch over them. Me. But out in the higher meadows, there's a wildness. There's wild animals out there. And somebody's got to protect those sheep. That's me. There's the bears and the lions. They're out there. And if I'm not careful, they're going to want to eat my sheep. And me. Mm -hmm. The one thing you got to do is learn how to handle your fear. I'm not bigger than those wild animals, but God is. Maybe that's when I learned that God was bigger. If I trusted in God, I figured him and I could manage. <coughs> because God's bigger than those wild animals. Everything's possible with God behind you. To defend myself, I learned how to use a slingshot. When you take the smooth stone and you sling it around, if you aim it just right with those bears, you get right between the eyes and that's what takes care of them. So I practice a lot, you understand? Because my life depended on it. But even with all that practice, when I came face to face with a bear, I was still pretty nervous. So I always wanted God beside me. I always said a little prayer. I said, Lord, be my aim, for these sheep depend on me. God never let me down. Well, I'm sure you guys are probably tired of hearing about my sheep. One day, my dad, he sent me to take food to my brothers. They were in the army serving King Saul, battling the Philistines out on the west side of town over there. All I was supposed to do was take him the food and come back like a good little gopher. But when I got there, you wouldn't believe what I saw. I just had to stay. It was, it was such a racket going on. On one side of the valley were our forces, and on the other side of the valley were the Philistines. And there was just such a commotion going on. You just cannot imagine. But I'm going to divide you up right here, slide you over that way. Come this way. This way. Come over this way a little bit. And you guys are on one side there. And we're going to count down five seconds, okay? I want you guys to growl and holler at each other. Ready? Go. <laughs> and nobody could tell what was going on. I was kind of excited for it. I was a little scared for it. My young heart was just a beating. And then all of a sudden, it got really quiet. And from the other side, this huge man came walking out. He was a monster. I'd never seen anybody that big before. I nudged the shoulder next to the soldier next to me. I said, who is that? Oh my gosh, how big is he? Well, the soldier couldn't believe that I'd never heard of Goliath before. He said Goliath was six and a half cubits tall. Whoa, is right. You guys have any idea how big a cubit is? No, not really. I'll tell 
tell you what. You come up here. You come up here. Now you guys imagine that she's standing on top of her shoulders. Goliath's bigger than that. And we put a little, we put a sample out in the gym so you guys could see it, of how big he really is. You guys check that out later. The guy was huge. Thank you very much. <laughs> Well, Goliath, he's huge, but not only is he huge, he's a bully. He's coming out there, calling, calling us cowards, saying there's no man out there to challenge him, telling us that our God was puny. He said, he would, we could send any one person from our side to fight him one-on-one, -on -one, and the winner would decide the war. So after this long silence, I said, isn't gonna, anybody going to challenge him? Well, the guy next to me looked at me like I was nuts. He said, do you see how big he is? Maybe I was nuts. I said, what will happen? What happens maybe if somebody takes him on and actually wins? Well, I think the king would probably give him a real big reward and maybe give you his daughter for a bride. Well, I didn't care about that daughter for a bride stuff. I was only 13 years old. But my family could use the money. We weren't rich by any means. Well, just then, my, one of my older brothers, he came up to me, grabbed me from behind, and threw me back behind the tent, and starts yelling at me. What are you doing? Quit flapping your mouth. You're too young. Go home. Stop it. You're embarrassing us. <laughs> you guys know how it is when you're the youngest. That was pretty routine. I was used to it. But about then, an important looking soldier came and asked me to go away with him. And I did. Well, you should have seen my brother's mouth when I walked away. His mouth was just wide open. <gasps> he couldn't believe that I was going with the soldier. I'll tell you what, if there had been a fly that would have flown in his mouth, I do not think he would have noticed. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I don't think he'd have noticed if a locust would have flied in his mouth. He was just dumbfounded. So the soldier took me to King Saul, and King Saul asked me if I was the one asking about Goliath, and I said, yes, sir, I was. He says, are you, are you willing to take on Goliath? And I thought about it, and I said, you know, I reckon I am. About that time when the king's aide started, you can't mean, and King Saul cut him off. He said, if this young boy wants to take on King or Goliath, something that none of my brave soldiers have been willing to do, then let him do it. And he turned to me and he says, but take my armor, you're going to need it, believe me. Well, I tried the armor. It was big and heavy. I'm just a little guy. If I had tried to fight the bears and lions with all that armor, my sheep would have been dead a long time ago. Heck, I would have been dead a long time ago. It was too heavy. So I decided to go like I was. And as I walked off, you should have seen King Saul. His mouth's wide open. He just can't believe I'm not going to be using any armor. Like that. Like that. So as I walked along, I picked up some smooth stones so I'd be ready, prepared. And everywhere I went, it was this open mouth. Everybody on our side, our forces were all standing there with open mouths, looking at me like I'm some kind of a fool. Maybe I was cool. But I knew that my God was bigger. God was bigger than King Saul. God was bigger than my brothers. God was bigger than the bears and lions. And God was bigger than Goliath. Sure enough. You know, I don't think Goliath even saw me coming. When he did see me, he started laughing. He couldn't believe they were sending me out there. So while he's laughing, he's he's cursing at it. Let's hear this. Oh my goodness, they can't even send a man to challenge me. They gotta send a boy. Oh, your God must be pretty small and powerless if this is the best you got. While he was laughing, I remember the bears and lions, they don't laugh when they're stalking their prey. That was Goliath's first mistake. I remember that for years and years. 